Wow, it is hot in the studio today. And that's a problem because silicone rubber and urethane resin, it doesn't do, they do not like extremes of temperature. I was pouring a couple of molds for videos and the first one poured fine. But by the time I started on the second mold, I knew I was pushing my luck and I should have done it in two batches, mixed up two batches of rubber. But no, I was in a hurry, I wanted to get it done. My rubber was kicking and I knew it and I knew it was too hot and I was pushing it and I uh, really had to work to try to get the rubber to coat the model properly. And so, uh, <laughs> looking at this, I've seen a lot of bubbles, a lot of little pin bubbles that didn't rise out. The, the rubber was just too set to let the air rise out. So I don't know. This is, this is you know, it never pays to do stuff like that. You should always, you know, do it by the book. This mold will probably have flaws in it, uh, but we'll see when we open it up. If the temperature had been, say, 72 Fahrenheit in the studio when I poured them, I would have had plenty of time. I could easily have poured both of these molds at the same time. But because it was 90 degrees, you know, I, I try to get away with something I knew perfectly well would be difficult. If it's too hot, they set up really fast. If it's too cold, they set up really slow, or they may not cure at all. So one of the most important factors when casting resins, when making molds, is controlling your ambient temperature. And the rule of thumb is, if you're comfortable in a t-shirt, if you're comfortable in your shirt sleeves, I'm thinking around 72, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, then the materials will be comfortable. It's one of those factors, if you're new to these materials, that you may not realize how sensitive they are to, to temperature and how important it is to control the temperature. When it's really cold in my studio, I used to have a cardboard box and I put a space heater next to it and I'd put my materials in there and make kind of a little makeshift hot box. I did that for years and it worked fine. Then my old refrigerator died and I realized it would make a perfect hot box. So I took it and repurposed it into a hot box. Uh, there's a link to a video up here if you want to watch that video about how I did that. And that works great when it's cold in the studio because I can heat the materials up, work with them, and everything works fine. But it's harder when it's really hot in the studio. And you might say, but wait a minute, you have a refrigerator. Why don't you just put the materials in the refrigerator, get them chilling down, you know, not too cold, but to the right temperature. And then you'll have no problems. You can just go ahead and pour them and they'll cure up just fine. But there's a problem with that. And that is that the minute you take the resin out of the refrigerator and you dispense it, you pour it, that cold resin hits the atmosphere and the moisture in the nice, hot, sweaty, warm, wet, and I live at the coast, so it's humid. And all that atmospheric moisture just goes whoom, and just condenses on that cold liquid. And we all know what happens when we get moisture into our resin. It foams. And it, I mean, it foams instantly. And so it's a big problem. What you really need to do is control the ambient temperature, the air temperature around you in a space. Now, if you're lucky, you're in a small space, you're in a garage, you're in a room in your house, and you do have control over that, then all you have to do is remember, make it comfortable in there. Don't let it be too cold, don't let it be too hot, you'll be fine. You will control one of the most important variables. For me, I work in this huge warehouse space and it's almost impossible to heat and cool, or it's so expensive, I just can't afford to. So what I've decided to do is repurpose a little office space that we have up front and, de and dedicate it to those two jobs, pouring rubber and casting resin. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. I appreciate that. Also, there's a super thanks button if you want to make a one-time contribution. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.